Hi, welcome to our project page. Today we'll be presenting hydrogel bead development for microbial culture encapsulation, presented by Alyssa, Margaret, Tegan, Annalise, Willow, and myself, with our mentors, Dr. Skip Rochefort and Dr. Louis Sambrini from the School of Chemical, Biological, and Environmental Engineering. So a common widespread issue in the United States is groundwater contamination from volatile organic compounds known as VOCs and co-contaminants such as 1,4-deoxane. In low permeability zones in the subsurface, common remediation techniques such as pump and treat are not sustainable. A bacteria strain, Rhodococcus rhodochros, ATCC21198, is an alkane oxidizing bacterium capable of degrading some VOCs and 1,4-deoxane. So our proposal is to create permeable reactive barriers with rhodococcus rhodochros co-encapsulated by hydrogel beads to biodegrade contaminants occurring in groundwater aquifers, as shown on the figure on the right. So hydrogels are made by cross-linking polymer chains and can be done in two different ways, chemical or physical. Chemical cross-linking is cross-linking using covalent bonds, and this cannot be undone. Whereas physical cross-linking is cross-linking using any method other than covalent bonds, and this can be reversed. For example, gel and gum is a thermogel, so it cross-links when it's heated or cooled to specific temperatures, but within a certain range, it will remain a solution, so it uses physical cross-linking. What we are doing in the lab is making hydrogel beads. To do this, the polymer solution is dropped into the cross-linking agent using a pipette. When this happens, the outside of the bead will cross-link first and form the bead shape. For example, as you can see in the diagram to the side, the sodium alginate solution was dropped into the calcium chloride solution. As the calcium ions penetrate the bead, they cross-link the sodium alginate. But the calcium ions won't go deeper into the bead until the alginate towards the outside has been almost completely cross-linked. And you can see in the diagram that this forms a ring of gel with the rest of the solution still contained inside. Once the calcium ions reach the center of the bead, that bead is considered fully gelled and it's ready to be removed from the cross-linker. The polymers that we have been exploring are sodium alginate for its nice round structure, low acyl gel and gum for its stability and its ability to form firm beads, PVA for its strength and long degradation time, and chitosan for its antimicrobial properties to prevent the gels from molding. The purpose of our work is to encapsulate the rhodococcus into the hydrogel beads in order to degrade the contaminants such as 1,4-dioxane, which is a carcinogen, in order to treat groundwater. So in the short term, we've been looking to create beads that are both durable and able to provide an environment for the rhodococcus. But longer term, we are looking for the best method for encapsulating these microorganisms into the hydrogel beads, and then the best method for scaling up our entire production process. In order to begin the bead making process, we needed to make the different polymer solutions. The four types of polymers we used for solution making were PVA, chitosan, low acyl gel and gum, and sodium alginate. The basic process for solution making for the PVA, chitosan, and low acyl gel and gum is to measure the desired amount of water into a beaker, which is located on a magnetic stir plate with a magnetic stir bar. Then the water is heated to the necessary temperature for each polymer, and the polymer is slowly incorporated into the water. For sodium alginate, the water and polymer are blended together using an electric mixer. However, by themselves, the solutions would not form gel beads, so cross-linking solutions also had to be made. The cross-linking solutions made were borax, calcium chloride, calcium lactate, sulfuric acid, and thermal, which is temperature. Many of these solutions were made in a very similar way to the polymer solutions by, slow, by slowly adding cross-linker into the water that is continuously mixed. When working, we also tested different solution mixes, and this was done by combining the individual solutions together on a magnetic stir plate with the desired weight by volume. And as previously mentioned, the method for bead creation was taking the polymer solution and using a pipette to drop it into the cross-linking solution until gelation was observed. When a successful solution had been identified, the process was taken even further through the performance of a time trial. Time trials are dropping many beads in at once and then at different time intervals, taking a couple of beads out to test their properties and observe how, observe how they've changed. When we're looking at our time trials, we're looking for them to become firm and strong beads. These are the polymer solutions that we created and tested along with our weight percents and the temperature of the solution was heated to achieve a fully incorporated solution. 
for the PVA, we've tested a two, four, and eight weight percent and heated the solution to 90 degrees. For Kaidison, we created a two weight percent solution and heated it to, heated it to 80 degrees Celsius. For low acyl gel gum, we created a one to 2.5 weight percent solution and heated it to 60 degrees Celsius. And finally, for sodium alginate, we made a 0.5 to two weight percent solution and made it at 25 degrees Celsius. And we made these solutions as individual solutions and test them as such, but we also mixed the solutions together for further analysis and testing. We first started with PVA gel beads, but we moved on because the beads did not have enough structure and turned out very gooey and thick. So we then did a bunch of research on different um, polymers for gel beads, and we tested chitosin, low acyl gel and gum, sodium alginate. The chitosin beads did not gel at all, so we obviously had to move on from that. Um, low acyl gel and gum and chitosin did gel, but did not have all the properties that we wanted. Finally, we did a test with sodium alginate, PVA, low acyl gel and gum, and chitosin. Unfortunately, when these were mixed together, they gelled and were unable to gel into beads and just formed one large, thick substance. Um, so our most successful gel beads were sodium alginate, PVA, and low acyl gel and gum. These created wrong, round, strong beads that were very uniform. And in cold calcium chloride, or cold calcium lactate, they can gel completely. In calcium chloride, we have a gel time of 14 minutes. In calcium lactate, it's a bit longer, but the final product is the same. So in conclusion, we'll be moving forward with the sodium alginate, PVA, and low acyl gel and gum polymer solutions using the cold calcium chloride and the cold calcium lactate as our cross-linking agents. We plan to introduce the microorganisms to the hydrogel beads by incorporating their solution with the polymer solution and testing for growth, degradation, and stability. Growth will be monitored and recorded through isobutane uptake tests using batch reactors, and degradation will be tested using a pilot scale bioreactor to emulate a groundwater aquifer. As mentioned earlier, we are also interested in mass production of the gel beads containing the microorganisms, and a possible option could be a coaxial capillary extrusion gel bead generator, which we have available in our polymers lab. The system is flexible, so making alterations to align with our research shouldn't be an issue, and it can produce 100 beads per minute or higher depending on the size of the bead, which we have an example of this system on the right. Lastly, we just want to thank you guys for coming to our project page and learning more about what we are up to from Connor, Alyssa, Margaret, Willow, Annalise, Tegan, and our mentors, Dr. Skip Rochefort, and Dr. Lewis Simprini. We wish you well and we hope you have a great day.